Welcome back everybody. Today I am going to make a delicious barbecue beef ribs in the oven. And to start, I'm going to make a rub. Here I'm using two tablespoons of Lowry seasoning salt. You could just use salt if you like, but I like to use seasoning salt. I'm also going to use one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, by the way, please be sure to click that bell notification to get all of my newest videos and subscribe, like, and share. I appreciate it. I'm also going to add two tablespoons of salt-free lemon pepper. And if you do have lemon pepper that has salt in it, just adjust the seasoning salt. I'll also be adding one tablespoon of smoked paprika. Now, if you do not have smoked paprika, you can use regular but if you do want a nice smoky flavor to these oven ribs, I do suggest you using the smoked paprika. It really does give it a nice smoky flavor. Okay, I'm going to give that a mix. Now, the next ingredient is optional, but I do like to balance a little bit of sugar with a rub, so I am going to add one tablespoon of sugar. You could use brown sugar as well. Now, if you don't have any of these dry spices to make a rub, you could use a store-bought rub of your choice. But what I also like to do is when I do make this rub, I like to add it to my homemade barbecue sauce. So if you are going to follow the recipe for the barbecue sauce, again, use your favorite store-bought barbecue rub because the spices in that rub or any rub, if it's for barbecue, will probably follow the same flavor profile that would go into a sauce. At least that's my opinion and that's what I like to do. Okay, so now that my rub is ready, I am going to reserve around two tablespoons for my barbecue sauce. I might not use it all in the barbecue sauce, but I just want to reserve some. And honestly, this whole amount of rub is actually not going to go in this recipe. You, you might end up with some leftover. Again, it's up to your taste. If you want to use all the rub on the ribs and in the barbecue sauce, go for it. But I'm just going to give you the measurements that I used today. Okay, my rub is ready, now to the ribs. So here I've already begun to remove the silver skin from the back side of the ribs. You'll want to do that. And I'm using five pounds of beef ribs today. And once I'm done doing this, I'm going to let it soak in cold water for one hour to remove any excess blood. Then I will give it a good rinse and pat them dry. Okay. So at this point, my ribs are washed and prepped and dried. So now I'm going to start seasoning them. Here I've lined a baking sheet with aluminum foil. And what I'm going to use today is beef tallow. I'm going to spread that all over my racks of ribs and that will help the dry rub adhere to the ribs. You do not have to use beef tallow. This is what I'm experimenting with today. You could just brush some oil on top of the meat, or you can use something like mustard or honey mustard. It is completely up to you. But today I'm going to try my hand using beef tallow because I have it. So I am going to liberally season these ribs with that homemade rub that I made earlier. I'm probably going to use somewhere between two to three tablespoons of the rub. Once I'm done seasoning my ribs, I am going to cover them and wrap them tightly in aluminum foil. And I am going to be baking these in a preheated oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for somewhere between two and a half to three hours. Now that is going to depend on the consistent temperature of your oven and basically how much meat are on the ribs and how they are cut. So the cook time will vary, but somewhere between two and a half to three hours at 300 degrees Fahrenheit will give you a tender cooked oven baked rib. So I'm putting these right into the oven and I'm going to set my timer for three hours. In the meantime, I'm going to work on my homemade barbecue sauce. So here I will be using eight ounces of ketchup, I'm also going to be using around three tablespoons of molasses. You could also use honey or brown sugar in place of the molasses. I'm also going to be using several teaspoons of that rub, 
I'm going to be using soy sauce today because I didn't have Worcestershire sauce. So I'll be using a teaspoon of soy sauce. I'm also going to be using a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and a tablespoon of bacon grease. You could just use oil. I'm also going to be using one small onion. You could also just skip this and just use store-bought barbecue sauce in place of what I'm making today. Okay, so to start this barbecue sauce, I'm going to add that rendered bacon fat that I had from an earlier recipe. By the way, check out the link below. I'm probably going to be posting my new charro beans video, which is a Mexican style pinto bean soup that I'm actually going to cook and eat along with these ribs today. So once the bacon fat has melted, I'm ready to put in my diced onion. And that was the onion from that small onion I showed you earlier. And all I'm going to do is saute these onions until they get translucent and softened. Once they have softened and cooked a bit, I am now going to add some of that barbecue rub that I made earlier. Ultimately, I will be adding around two teaspoons of this. And again, a lot of this depends on your preference. For example, I'm going to add molasses to balance the salty, sweet, and tang of this barbecue sauce. If you want it sweeter, you might want to add more. And if you don't want that apple cider vinegar tang, you can add less of that or just use mustard in place of the apple cider vinegar. Okay, so now I'm going to add that extra teaspoon, which will give me two teaspoons of the barbecue rub right on top of the onions and I'm just going to let it warm through a little bit and allow a lot of that smoky flavor from the paprika and the other dried spices to sort of open up and warm through and once that's done I'm going to add my eight ounces of tomato ketchup by the way if you do not have ketchup and you want to use tomato puree, you definitely can do so. Again, just adjust the ratio of the vinegar. Because there is vinegar in tomato ketchup, I'm not going to add tons of vinegar into this sauce. But if I were using something like a tomato puree, I might add a little bit more of that apple cider vinegar to just give it the tang that I want. Okay, so now that that is combined, I'm going to start adding the rest of the ingredients. My barbecue sauce is ready, and I think my beef ribs are ready to be sauced. So I removed them from the oven, and I want to show you what they look like. My ribs have been cooking for two hours and 45 minutes, not quite three hours. So again, the cook time can vary, and you'll want to cook them to your desired tenderness. And right now, these are perfect. So I'm going to take them off of this baking sheet, and I'm going to place them on another baking pan and I'm going to take my barbecue sauce and slather it all over the ribs, just like this. Okay, so now that my ribs are sauced, I'm going to put them in the broiler for around a minute or so. And then after they're bubbling and they'll have a little bit of caramelization, they are done. I'm pulling them out of the oven and I'm going to serve them up. My kitchen smells amazing. Everyone's ready to eat. 
so I'm going to serve these ribs up. I'm making charro beans and Mexican rice. I will put links below for those recipes. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And please consider subscribing. And if you are, click that bell notification to be part of my notification squad. So I hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.